In this video, we want to tackle a couple of types of pronouns, and these are impersonal pronouns and demonstrative pronouns. When it comes to impersonal pronouns, there are just two that fit into this category, and then one of these fits into it barely. So we have it and one. And you will also see that one is often classified as an indefinite pronoun. So that's a possibility too if you want to classify it as an indefinite pronoun, um, but we're mostly going to focus here on it. So it you may have seen before because it's also in the personal pronoun category, and this one fits into either one, but there is a difference between the two uses. So if you were to say, for instance, it is raining, a very common example, then what makes it impersonal here is that it's not referring to anything uh, specific. It's not referring to a particular person or thing. It's not referring back to a noun. So this it lacks an antecedent. So we could say no antecedent. And if you remember from the, the video on personal pronouns, the antecedent is the noun that comes before the, na uh, before the pronoun and that the pronoun refers back to. So when it lacks an antecedent, then it can be considered an impersonal pronoun. And when it does have an antecedent, then it's considered a personal pronoun. And that's why you can see now why we call these impersonal pronouns, because these pronouns are not really referring to any specific uh, noun or uh, person, place, or thing. When we use one in this sense, then what we mean by one is a person. So you could write something like, one might argue, and you sometimes see that in an academic context, but often it also sounds a little bit uh, pedantic and as if you're trying to show off. So try to avoid it if, if unless necessary. That's it for the impersonal pronouns. Let's move on next to the demonstrative pronouns. And there are a number of these. So we have this, that, those and these. I guess I should have switched these two around as you'll see in a second, but um, it's fairly clear that there's just four demonstrative pronouns. We can classify these or organize these a little bit more specifically yet. We can say that this and that are singular. They refer to just one thing, whereas those and these are plural. The other way to organize these, and now you'll see why I should have maybe switched these around, is that two of them tend to refer more to things that are closer. So this and these tend to refer to things that are closer at hand, whereas that and those refer to things that are further away. So if you say those geese, then you probably mean geese that are a little bit more distant. The one that's the most confusing is that. Okay, so the basic point behind demonstrative pronouns, we'll get to that in a second here, is that we tend to use them to point to things. So we're pointing to things, and you can think of them as demonstrating something. So if you're demonstrating a point, you say this particular one, and so on. Now that is somewhat confusing, because that can also be a relative pronoun. And we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit here, but I do think that this is useful to be able to distinguish between uh, the two pronouns. So if you were to um, use it as a demonstrative pronoun, you might say, for instance, that girl, and then you're pointing to that girl. But if you wanted to use it as a relative pronoun, a relative pronoun introduces more information. It tends to introduce a relative clause. So if you were to say, that girl that loves bubblegum, I don't know, we have to make up something, I suppose, then in this case, that is not pointing to something. Instead, it is a relative pronoun that introduces more information. It relates more about our noun girl. Okay, so in this case, it introduces a relative clause that loves bubblegum. Loves is the verb. That becomes not just the relative pronoun, but also the subject of this verb. And it, uh, the relative pronoun then is a very nice way to uh, introduce some extra information. 
Let's scroll down a little bit here and finish with a few practice sentences just to see what we've been looking at. So if we look at the first sentence, it says, it is believed that that coat belonged to Elvis. In this case, we have it, and it here is impersonal. And that's because it's not referring back to a specific person, place, or thing. It is an it without an antecedent. What is it in this sentence? We could say, well, it's the fact, right? All of that, all of what follows in the sentence is this fact that is believed. But that's to interpret what it means. And really, it's a kind of placeholder here. It's a word that is sitting there so that we can create this sentence and we can talk about, uh, in this case, the coat. Now, we also have two that, so this gets rather confusing. But if we look at it closely, we can see that the second one is the demonstrative one demonstrative. And that's because we're pointing to that coat, right? We're talking about that one. Whereas this that is relative. And now we're introducing more information. It is believed that, and now, you know, this whole next clause um, comes into focus. And then the last example here, you can try that key. There's our that, but it won't fit. So in this case, we have that again as demonstrative, and it is definitely pointing at something. So it's pointing at the key, whereas it is not impersonal. So we might think that it would be impersonal here, but it's not. And the reason for that is that it is pointing back to something. It's pointing back to the key. So it does have an antecedent, and that's where it is just a personal pronoun. Hopefully that helps to distinguish between these pronouns. And uh, these categories are not very big. There's just a few pronouns in them. But it will help you to figure out in the long run whether you're dealing with a pronoun and then which kind.